Hello, good morning. We are starting off the vlog with me going to get my hair done, which is very exciting. It is 8.50 and my appointment is at 9.30. There's a little bit of a drive. But Clark is off today, so I made the appointment today. So she's like good at home with him. I get a little, you know, mommy, me time. And I need it, because look at my, first of all, I don't even know what's happening here. But look how grown out my hair is. I have all these little hair from all my postpartum hair loss just peeking through. Not only is that happening, which you know, we like, it's just a weird stage that they're at, but they're coming back with so many white hairs. So many white hairs coming out of my head. So I need her to fix me. Uh, yeah, so let's go get our hair done. For the road, I have my celery juice, of course, and then I have my chicory root coffee. Okay, back from getting my hair done. I forgot to vlog while I was there, of course. But here it is. Here's the new hair. Brought the blonde up closer to my roots. We left the little baby hairs alone because them being highlighted would be weird. So we let that go. Um, I didn't take anything off the length. I did get my hair cut probably like a month ago. My mom did it, so I didn't need it. I didn't need it cut. Um, but I did take like four inches off of it like a month ago. Crazy. But yeah, nice little refresh. It's a partial balayage and I love it. I'm here for it. It's everything I needed to feel better. All right, here's the full thing. Cause I guess you can't really see it when the camera's up close to my face, but we brighten the blonde a little bit, but I love it. it. Feels so much better than it was. So even though I'm just about to pull it up in a ponytail, but ooh. morning starting out with celery juice and then I'll move on to my fruit which is some oranges dragon fruit and mango and she is having the same thing say good morning good morning say good morning Nala. so she's having the same thing that I'm having fruit first on an empty stomach is the most cleansing best for digestion it's super healing so we will have our fruit and then I'll probably give her some pancakes <laughs> Yum. And lately I've been using this Glow Bomb, which is a lotion that my friend makes and it's all clean ingredients. So I've been using this as the barrier on her hands to help any kind of breakout or anything like that because she just is so sensitive and she gets blisters and things on her hands often since her reaction she had. like month and a half ago keeping that barrier on her face and her hands and that seems to be helping a lot so we are heading to the doctor she has her a nine month appointment which is insane she turns nine months tomorrow but we're going to appointment today and I'm excited to see just kind of where she's at, I'm gonna go because now I'm driving. So I'm just curious to see like where her weight is and her length and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I don't really have any pressing things for them other than the fact that, you know, she had that massive reaction, but she's been good as of late. So uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna ask about some tips on just traveling if they have any tips for us because we are flying with her in a couple weeks to go to Florida. So I don't know, there's nothing really else I have to ask them. Just gonna be a nice, you know, wellness checkup kind of situation. Hey, I love you, baby. You excited? Okay, we just got done at the doctor's and everything went really well. She is uh, 19 pounds, 10 ounces. She's like 27 inches long. I don't know what the percentile is. We didn't, I didn't ask about the percentile this time. But anyway, her eczema looks good. There's still little patches, um, but nothing too crazy. We're just avoiding the nuts and the wheat. 
and she did have a little weird thing with banana like a couple weeks ago so we're just avoiding that for now um but other than that she's really good and then they checked her iron and it needed to be above an 11.2 to make sure that she is getting enough iron her hemoglobin was at 13 so she definitely is getting enough iron and i feel so so grateful that she is in the safe zone and i don't need to stress about that anymore <laughs> Sage's eight month update. She now is officially nine months old, but the eighth month just got completed. It's all fresh, so I feel like that's when I'm gonna do the updates, it's just when she's fully completed that month. She currently right now has a little breakout from an acai bowl that she had yesterday. This girl is so sensitive. So her whole face is broken out underneath, underneath her neck and her chin. It's really, really sad. She was doing so well for so long and now we have another little reaction. Okay. Month eight has been so much fun. I feel like I say it every single time, but each month I'm like, this is my favorite stage. Like this is my favorite month so far. And I think that it might just keep going that way. Yeah, you say hi. So I wrote my notes down. So I suggest you guys do this whether you put it on video or not. I mean, I guess that's what baby books are for is to keep track of stuff month by month. And I did not do that and I fully regret it. I really wish that I would have gotten her baby book and put all the notes in it. And I know it's not too late, but now I just feel like I'm way too behind. And now I just feel bad about not doing it. So my advice would be to get your baby a baby book right when they're born and start keeping track of all the things. But anyway, if you don't have a baby book and you don't do a video, just take notes about what's happening each month because time is fleeting. It goes by so fast, like everyone tells you it will. And you start to forget stuff, it's wild. Everything is just kind of <laughs> blur. So in month eight, she started crawling. I think it was like a couple days into her being eight months, she started crawling and has been on the move ever since. And then that evolved into pulling up on things and now she is crawling like really fast everywhere. Like I'll literally put her down in the kitchen and walk to the bedroom and like go into the bathroom and like call for her. She scurries on in there and pokes her little head around the door. It's really cute. People say, Oh, you know, just wait till they start crawling. Just wait till they start getting into everything, which it's like, yeah, obviously like that's gonna happen. But I don't know, I've really enjoyed the stage of her crawling and exploring and I don't know, not necessarily getting into things, but just, I don't know, I don't really mind it as much. And of course I'm gonna keep an eye on her anyway. So I've really enjoyed being able to set her down and let her crawl around. Like, I feel like that's been really nice, honestly. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> do you like it? <laughs> Are you happy that you get to crawl around? And now she clearly is pulling up on things and standing 
on her own while she's holding on to something. <laughs> what you doing, big girl? So that started now too. Uh, she's been doing that probably for maybe a couple couple weeks, maybe. Uh, yeah, she just wants to stand now. So if I set her down to like, you know, crawl on the floor, she just like locks her legs and just wants to stand. So I think that she's gonna be walking before her first birthday. That's kind of my, that's kind of my guess. She also said hi. I swear she said hi, because you know, she's been waving and everything for a month or so now, but I swear that she has said hi. She's done it a few times and then she just has stopped, which I found. I feel like they do things and then sometimes they just stop for a while, but she definitely said hi. And then she tries to say mama, like I'll say mama and try to like pronounce it for her. And she puts her lips together and goes mmm, mmm. Yeah, like she'll do that, but she can't say it yet. And she hasn't done any of the sounds to say dada because I know that's easier typically for them to say. And she has not even said the D sound. She's gonna say mama first, 100%, 100%, aren't you? You're gonna say mama first for sure. So she did have a reaction to bananas last month and we tried it again this month and she had the reaction again. Just got hives like all under her neck. This girl is sensitive, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. She's now associating words, like we'll say mom and dad and Nala and um, maybe. <laughs> and certain things like her binky she knows, like so she's starting to associate um, what things actually mean. She's been doing her little squeal for a while, like really excited, just like communicating and just using her voice. But now when music is on, I swear she's mimicking the sounds and trying to sing. And it's, it's been really cute in the car, she'll do it. She's definitely started getting into my plants, so that's been fun. Been trying to tell her no, and of course it's something that she has to learn, um, but she has not <laughs> learned it yet. And I think my me like having a reaction like, no, 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 you know, that kind of thing, It she thinks it's funny, she just giggles and laughs and smiles at me when I tell her no. So I think if I just make my reaction smaller and just say like, no, and then pick her up and move her somewhere else and just give her something else to do, I think is gonna be more beneficial than me like making it a big deal like, oh no, no, you know, cause I think she likes that reaction out of me. So I've just been like really chill about it. She'll be doing it for a second, just, you know, pulling the dirt out of the plants and whatever. And I say, no, we don't do that. And, um, and just kind of move her away from the situation and try to distract her or something else. So that's something we're navigating, <laughs> learning boundaries. This is the stage where they get really clingy apparently and it, it shows that on the Wonder Weeks app and then our pediatrician said the same thing. And she was like, is she in her clingy phase yet? Stranger danger phase? And I'm like, she's been in that phase. <laughs> she has definitely been in that phase. She is a mama's girl through and through, very attached to me. Um, if other people hold her, she just cries because she just wants me. Uh, I don't know how long that season is gonna last. It's funny because she's such an easy, chill baby. She on, she really, really is. But when other people hold her, she just, she just wants me constantly. She now, like, she's fine with Clark and stuff, but she prefers me. And if he takes her by herself without me, like, she does not do well. She just cries the whole time and it's very sad. <laughs> she's pretty much down to two naps per day now. Uh, she typically goes down between like 9.30 and 10-ish and then we'll go back down around like two or three. Uh, she typically sleeps for about an hour and a half. That's kind of her like go-to time. Sometimes it'll be a little bit longer. Sometimes it'll be just an hour if it's a shorter nap, but most, most of the time, nine times out of 10, it'll be an hour and a half. And sometimes we'll get a two hour, two and a half hour stretch. And then we just adapt from there. We still go based off of wake windows. So right now she's up around two and a half hours at a time. And that's just kind of the way that it falls for her naps. And wake windows has been the thing that I swear has helped me um, just navigate a schedule with her or maybe just a routine. It helps to know like at this age, biologically, they're awake for about this long and then they're gonna get tired around this time and nap. And she is like to a T. She, since she's been, literally since she's been born, she has followed wake windows and it's it's honestly been really helpful. It's a first time mom being like, is my baby tired? Are, are they hungry? Do they need to sleep? I don't know, like how long are, have, do they need to be awake at this time? So wake windows have just saved me. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up 
age-appropriate wake windows. And that just really has helped us a lot. When we're out, sometimes she'll be awake for like three, sometimes four hours at a time. That's not really that common, but she can be awake that long. She usually does pretty well if she is up a little bit longer than the normal two and a half hour window. That's just typically like when we're home, we stick to that. Um, but yesterday we were out and she was up for like almost four hours and, and it was fine. So say she gets up from her last nap around like, I don't know, three or something like that and doesn't go to bed till like seven or 7.30, then sometimes I'll give her a little cat nap around five and let her sleep for like 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and then she's fine and then she'll go to bed between like seven and eight. You just adapt. Okay, lastly, and then I'll wrap up this update. She has, I think, three more teeth coming in. So she got her first bottom two teeth when she was four months old, which I feel like is pretty early, but those things pop through when she was four months old. Now she has another one on the bottom, so there'll be three on the bottom, and then she has one poking through the top, and then I think the second one on the top is gonna poke through, so that'll be three. And she has not acted any kind of way, she has not acted more fussy. I have checked the monitor, and I think she's been getting up a little bit through the night, like moving around, but we still have never had to get up and go into her room since she's been five and a half months old. She sleeps 12 hours every single night, which is great. Um, but I checked the monitor and she's like gotten up a little bit and shifted around and laid back down. She's done that a little bit more. She's been handling it really well and doesn't seem to be bothered by it. So I would love for that to continue. Okay, that update took a while, sorry about that. Okay, so that concludes Sage's eight month 